this video is proudly supported by Glasswire. For more information, check the link below. What's up guys, CB Modder here, back with another video. Now just the other day we did a hard drive buyers guide and I thought it was only fair to focus on these little guys SSDs as well. So we're back at it again with an SSDs buyers guide. So if you're looking for a brand new SSD or you're trying to put together a build without really spending too much and you want to know what drive is going to be best for you, well today we'll cover exactly that and find out which will be the best option. Will it be one of these small little guys or a bigger two and a half inch SSD? Again today we're going to be covering covering exactly that. Now, a lot of people just think, well, an SSD is either a big thing or a small thing. You whack it in your system and you're pretty much good to go. And whilst that may be the case, if you actually look closer, especially like hard drives, there's actually quite a lot of differences between different SSD types. So, well, let's kick into it with the actual physical size. And just like hard drives, SSDs do come in multiple sizes and also two form factors. You've got little guys like these in your M SATA, M.2 kind of interfaces, but we've also too got bigger two and a half inch drives. And this is always the first thing that I generally would consider because, well, if it doesn't physically fit inside of a computer or a device, there's no point in actually buying it. Why would you buy a PCI Express SSD if you're trying to put storage into your laptop? It doesn't exactly work like that. So no matter how cool the drive may be, if it doesn't physically fit, well, it doesn't really matter there. So there's really three main form factors to consider on the market here today, but definitely as time does go on, new form factors and new standards will come out. But at the moment, we have your typical two and a half inch hard drive. We got the PCI Express guys and also to the M SATA M.2 kind of little sticks of gum form factors, much like what we have waving around right here. These guys are smaller than your hard drives, but also to more resemble a stick of gum. Uh, instead of anything else. Now the two and a half inch SSD form factor is one of the most popular out there and just like the two and a half inch hard drive have a lot of compatibility. With just about anything that runs a SATA interface being able to plug into this guy it really is an awesome drive to just throw into anything from laptops to desktops to game consoles to TVs even you can put these drives in just about anything. So if you want something that's truly just pretty much plug and play provided it has a SATA interface you're pretty much good to go. And not to mention there's also two ID eSSDs also too in this form factor. So when it comes to size, two and a half inch is generally not a bad place to start. And even if you don't have room inside of your tiny little PC build, thanks to the fact that there's no moving parts, you could even just throw it in there and not really worry about mounting it because again, it is a solid state drive. Moving on then, we also do get the PCIe standard. Now on the other hand, this is actually really large and also too kind of hard to fit in all types of system, requiring you to have a free PCI Express slot and a case big enough to allow for your video video card, any other adding card, plus the storage, it does actually have a few requirements that may not be to everybody's taste. Not to mention, you can't take a PCI Express SSD and try to jam it into a laptop, because chances are that laptop doesn't have a PCI Express slot. So, Whilst these guys do offer a lot of speed and usually offer some RAID functionality, unfortunately, they're not exactly for everyone out there. And I guess there's a, another sort of downside to them, they're a little bit expensive. But PCIe is another option you may want to consider if you do have the ability to run it. Then finally, we get sort of becoming the world's most popular standard now is M.2, or at least the uh, sort of small chip style design. So being able to be small and also to have a lot of different options, M.2 kind of form factor is really really popular. Now, when I say M.2, I'm also too lumping in other things like M SATA and even Apple's proprietary little SSD thing, anything that comes out in these little stick of gum type of form factor because, well, they're really small and they're also too having a lot of compatibility. For example, M SATA comes in with a very small form factor and a lot of laptops, even though they may be older, still support M SATA slots, whether that's because they have M SATA wireless cards and they just happen to have an extra M SATA slot or they have M SATA options in higher end trims or or just different country trims and yours didn't happen to have one, M SATA drives are actually really compatible with a lot of different systems out there. And also too, M SATA and M.2 drives are really popular in the current desktop builds as you can hide them under heat shields and they're basically invisible. So you can have a really clean setup in terms of no cables running to the actual storage. So even though two and a half inch drives are really popular, little M.2 and NVMe kind of our drives are also too pretty popular there. But also too, do keep in mind that 
that when you are looking at these form factors, there's actually sub sort of form factors of these types of ones. So we did mention that there's M.2 and M SATA, but also too, there's the actual lengths of these guys that you do need to keep into consideration. For example, M.2 has 22, 110, 22, 80, 22, 60, and also to 22, 42. Now these are essentially, well, the measurements of the drive being 22 millimeters across and 80 millimeters down or 110 down or so on and so forth. So do keep in mind that not all sizes are the same and you will need to make sure that your motherboard can support it. For the most part, uh, most motherboards support 2280 and also to generally speaking have an extra slot somewhere that also to supports 22110. But do keep in mind, not all motherboards will support all sizes of this particular form factor. But once we've gone ahead and actually selected a form factor or size that will work for us, we then need to consider the actual connectivity stand of these drives because there's actually quite a lot going on under the hood other than the actual physical connection and physical appearance of the drives themselves. Now these are usually dictated by the actual motherboard that you have in your system or the system itself if it's an all-in-one type of system. So do check compatibility lists on the motherboard's website or if it is sort of a pre-build or something else, check the compatibility on the website there as not all standards will work together. Put simply, we have M.2 NVMe for example and also to M.2 SATA. So there are different connectivity standards that run these SSDs. Now, taking a little bit closer, we do have NVMe M.2, which offers much faster speeds, but a little bit less in compatibility. We have M.2 SATA, which offers the same connection type, but offers a little bit more actual connectivity, thanks to the fact that it's running the older SATA standard. We also do have M SATA, which is actually different to M.2. A lot of people do get this mixed up, and we did a video right there, I think we did, uh, comparing the two different two, because there are quite some differences in them. We also do get U.2, which is another type of NVMe type standard that really only Intel makes. I think one other manufacturer makes it. I might be completely wrong, but there's very few SSDs actually running U.2. And then also too, we have the standard SATA interface, IDE, and also to PCIe. Now, not only is the actual speed of these drives being SATA, NVMe, PCIe, actually dictated by the actual well standard they're running on, but also to the interfaces. So when you come to actually look at under the hood, there's quite a few things you will want to take into consideration when picking up an SSD. Not only is the plug type something you want to consider, but also to what kind of protocol or what kind of standard it is going to be running on. For example, NVMe at the time of recording maxes out at around the three and a half or so gigabytes per second, thanks to the fact that Samsung's released some really sweet new SSDs, check them out right there, whereas SATA runs at a lot slower speed. So do keep in mind, just because it's the same plug doesn't mean it's going to be the same speed. So we will need to take into consideration what is under the hood that's actually running these drives. Then we go ahead and actually look at the price point of these guys. Now prices are very much, well, relative to what kind of drive you're going to be buying. Everyone has a different use and every drive has its own positives and negatives. But my general rule of thumb for actually picking up a drive in terms of the actual price point is for around that $100 price point, we should be looking at around that sub 200 gigabyte SSD range, so your 120s or lower, even some 200 gig drives still go for less than 100 Australian dollars. And then around that 100 to 120, uh, we're looking at around that 250 gig drive, which strikes a really sweet spot. It's a little bit bigger than 200 gigabytes, but doesn't sort of cost the arm and leg that a much larger drive will actually cost. And then for around that 150 to 200 Australian dollars, we will be looking at 500 gigabytes. And obviously the higher we go, the more expensive they do get. Now, just like anything, when it comes to prices, just because you pay more doesn't mean you're actually going to be getting more in terms of speed or connectivity or even the storage you're getting. So do some research into the performance of the drives and how they stack up to other drives on the market. And that will give you a bit of an indication as to what kind of prices you should be paying. But all in all, in terms of the actual pricing department, it will definitely depend on the form factor, the capacity, and also to the standard that you are wanting for your SSD. So fortunately, there's not one be all and end all price that you should really be following. And then that also too then leads us into the actual capacity of these drives. Because pricing is so much balanced on what kind of actual storage you're going to be getting, storage is also to another thing that will definitely depend on what you are doing. If you're a content creator looking for a scratch disk, then a bigger drive will definitely do you a lot better than a smaller one. Whereas if you're an everyday end user who might be browsing the internet or something like that, having a really big drive isn't exactly completely necessary for what you may be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. However, there are some general rule of thumb that you do want to go ahead and follow. For example, if you are going to be expecting some heavy workload, for example, if you're rendering a video or 3D files to the SSD, generally speaking, buying a larger SSD will be a lot better because that will allow you to have more reads and write cycles on that SSD. Whereas the smaller
four-wheel drive will be filling up a lot faster, causing you to use up a lot more reads and writes, causing it to die sooner. Now, yes, technically, you're not going to be hitting that limit that a lot of SSDs do come out with, as we found out in that video. When you do get up in that 700 terabytes written, sure, the drive is working perfectly fine, but you need to be in a data center kind of situation to actually get anywhere near that rating. So, generally speaking, though, try and buy yourself a larger drive if you're going to be hitting the drive hard. However, if you're looking at buying yourself a new C drive for your OS, maybe you want to boot off it or something like that, a 250 gigabyte SSD is definitely a great place to start. It offers plenty enough storage for your OS install and a few other apps here and there. And despite SSD prices coming down, I still argue that there are very few SSDs that offer better value for money when it comes to the actual price to what you get in that range. 250, 256, kind of that around that is definitely a really great place if you are going to be picking up a brand new SSD for a C drive operation. Don't get me wrong, you can go larger. For example, 500 gig is another really great sweet spot. It is still a little bit pricey for a lot of people out there, but if you can afford it, a 500 gig SSD is also to another really good option. But if you really want to go all out, you can go with one and two terabytes and even four terabytes, thanks to Samsung releasing some pretty tricked out SSDs. But in terms of actual using it as a day-to-day -day kind of consumer, that 250, 256 kind of gig storage range is definitely a really place to go. But all in all, if you ask yourself some pretty simple questions, just like you should be doing and buying a hard drive, picking up an SSD can actually be a really great option. Now, yes, there is definitely a lot of different things out there that offer better speeds, better capacity and all that kind of stuff. And if you want to know specifically about speed, we actually did a multi 10-way showdown on a bunch of super fast SSDs that have just come out recently so you can find it up there again or I think link down below you can just search a channel it came out relatively recently where we went ahead and threw together a whole bunch of super fast NVMe SSDs but all in all picking an SSD can be pretty simple but let me know down in that comment sections if a 4 terabyte SSD came out for the price of a 500 gig SSD tomorrow would you run out and buy it or if you do have an actual question about SSDs you can let me know down in that comment sections I absolutely love talking about storage so I'd love to have a chat with you guys guys down there. Thanks all for watching. Check that description box if you want to go ahead and pick up any of the SSDs that we did talk about here today. Again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.